Hi guys, today we're gonna to talk about potassium and when you should not take extra potassium. The typical situation is that people are deficient in potassium and they need more potassium. And it's actually a rare uh, condition where you would need to cut back. Okay, now when I'm talking about excess potassium, you have this condition called hyperkalemia. This is too much potassium in your blood. 98% of all the potassium is inside the cell versus the outside the cell. In order to really know what's happening with potassium, I would recommend taking an intracellular potassium test. And uh, you can look it up online to try to find out where you could take it. I think it'd be a very valuable thing, but that would measure how much potassium is inside the cell. That being said, uh, some of the symptoms with hyperkalemia would be palpitations, muscle weakness, numbness, abnormal heart rate, and shortness of breath. And these are, <laughs> The identical symptoms, by the way, when you have hypokalemia, uh, which is interesting. So you can't really know what's happening based on the symptom. You could take a blood test. However, these are the top three conditions where you would not want to take potassium, and I'm going to tell you why. First one is stage five kidney disease. That would be end stage renal failure, renal meaning kidney. So if the kidneys are really diseased, you would not want to take potassium. However, this is rare, and potassium normally protects the kidney, okay? It helps the kidney, especially with blood pressure. In fact, it can probably help you lower your blood pressure. So just because you have kidney disease doesn't mean you don't need normal amounts of potassium. So you just need to check with your doctor. They're gonna tell you when you should avoid potassium or take potassium if you have a kidney problem. And the real issue with this is that if the kidney is diseased and it stops filtering and you're taking more potassium, you won't be able to release it and get rid of the excess amount and too much potassium could be a problem. But if you have healthy kidneys, it's almost impossible to develop hyperkalemia, too much potassium in the blood, through taking too much potassium because simply your body can easily get rid of excessive amounts of potassium mainly from the function of aldosterone. This is a hormone from the adrenal glands. And the purpose of aldosterone is to uh, retain sodium and get rid of excess potassium. So let me just kind of cover this next reason, and that's if you had an aldosterone deficiency. And that can come from uh, adrenal failure, uh, several other diseases of the adrenal gland in which you just don't have any more aldosterone. In that case, you won't be able to regulate properly the potassium and it can go too high. Again, very rare. Okay, Addison's disease. This is a condition, also rare, where you basically lose the function of your adrenal glands. And in that state, you, you lose a lot of weight, your skin gets bronzed, the inside of your lips and even your lips can get blue, your immune system is very, very fragile, and you lose a ton of salt, or basically sodium. So if you were to take excessive amounts of potassium, guess what you're gonna do? You're gonna drive down sodium even more. Well, Addison's disease is a state where you really need more salt. And a patient with this condition should be taking a ton of salt through the day to actually maintain the adrenal function. And they should definitely avoid potassium because this is the mineral that they're having a problem with. They have enough potassium, but they don't have enough sodium. And as a side note, insulin helps you absorb potassium in your cells. And if you have insulin resistance, like a lot of people have, guess what? You're generally gonna be deficient in potassium. You're not gonna have enough potassium in the cells, which is a more common condition. So taking more potassium will help regulate insulin and definitely help insulin resistance. All right, guys, thanks for watching. So if you want more knowledge on how to create a healthy body, subscribe now and get daily notifications. Hey, before you leave, I just wanted to give you a little quick history on some of the books that I wrote. This was one of the first books. It's called Dr. Berg Body Shapes. It was my attempt at um, writing about body types. Uh, what was very interesting about this book is I actually did all the images myself. Uh, don't ask me why. Um, they look actually not quite as professional as some of the uh, images that I have in the new book. But anyway, this is my first attempt right here called Dr. Berg's Body Shape Diets. 
and then I wrote a book, um, more extensive, called The Seven Principles of Fat Burning. I don't even have a copy anymore, actually, um, because it's outdated. Uh, the next book, uh, I put about 1,000 hours into this one right here, called The New Body Type Guide, Major Updates on the Body Types. Uh, I put a lot of energy into this. Uh, it has professional images, graphics, all sorts of things. Now, the problem with this book is it doesn't really describe what this is really about. Body types are only a small portion of what's in this book. And that's why I changed the name to the Healthy Keto Plan, okay? If you happen to have this book, you don't really need this book because there's some only very, very minor updates. But if you don't have this, you need to get this one right here. Um, this book goes into every single detail that you would ever want to know about. It goes into the seven principles of fat burning, it goes into hormones, uh, the body types, the basic keto plan. It goes into intermittent fasting. I talk about the 10 fat burning triggers and blockers and fat burning strategies with a lot of details in every single chapter. I go into body issues that interfere with losing weight. Um, there's very few people that just have a weight problem. They have a lot of body issues, whether it's sleeping problems, uh, stress problems, inflammation, menopause. I cover that extensively in this book. Then I talk about how to get rid of stress and I show you a technique. Uh, then I get into exercising. And then I have a lot of really good recipes in this book as well. So uh, this is a good reference guide. Um, on my website, if you get this book, you get this one free. It's called Healthy Keto intermittent fasting. This is the shortcut, uh, quick guide to this book. And uh, the reason I created this book is to have you within 45 minutes, learn how to do keto, okay, in intermittent fasting, exactly what you need to do. Then you can fill in the blanks with this book right here. So right now I'm doing a special, if you get this book, you get this one totally free, or you can go to Amazon and get these individually. So I just want to clarify the difference between this book and this updated one right here. If you don't have this, you need to get this right here. That way you can get the exact correct information to do it healthily.